to cross my obsequies in true lovers' right. What? With a torch? Muffle me, night awhile. Give me that mattock and the wrenching iron. Hold. Upon thy life I charge thee. Whatever thou hearest or seest, send all aloof and do not interrupt me in my course. Why I descend in this bed of death is partly to behold my lady's face, but chiefly to take thence from her dead finger a precious ring, a ring I must use in dear employment. Therefore, hence, be gone. But if thou, jealous, just return to pry in what I farther shall intend to do, by heaven, I'll tear thee joint by joint, and strew this hungry churchyard with thy limbs. <laughs> this time, in my intents are savage wild, more fearsome and more inexorable far than empty tigers or the roaring sea. <laughs> I will be gone, sir, and not trouble you. So, thou shalt show me friendship. Take thou that. Live and be prosperous. And so long, good fellow. <laughs> For all this same, I hide me hereabout. His look I fear, and his intent I doubt. <sighs> thou detestable maw. <sighs> thou womb of death. <laughs> Gorge with the dearest morsel of the earth. Thus, I enforce thy rotten jaws to open! <clears throat> and in this fight, I'll crown thee with more food. This is that banished, haughty Montague that murdered my true love's cousin, <clears throat> with which grief it is supposed that the fair creature died. And here has come to you some villainous shame to the dead bodies. I will apprehend thee. Stop thy hollow toil, vile Montague! Can vengeance be pursued further than death? Obey and go with me, for thou must die. I must, and therefore I came hither. Good gentle youth, tempt not a desperate man. Fly hence and leave me. Think upon all these gone. Let them affright thee. <sighs> I beseech thee, youth, put not another sin upon my head by urging me to fury. I do defy thy combination and apprehend thee for a felon here. So thou shalt provoke me. Then have at thee, boy. <laughs> my tossed soul did not attend him as we rode. I think he told me Paris should have married Juliet. <laughs> Said he not so, or did I dream it so? Or am I mad hearing him talk of Juliet? To think it was so. <sighs> Give me your hand. One bit with me and sour misfortune's books. I'll bury thee in a trap. Grave. Oh no, a lantern slaughtered you. For here lies Juliet. Her beauty makes this vault a feasting presence full of light. Death, fly thou there by a dead man in turn. How often men are at the point of death have they been merry, which their keepers call 
a lightning before death. Oh, how may I call this a lightning? Oh, my love, my wife, death that has sucked the honey of thy breath hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. Thou art not conquered. Beauty's ensign is yet crimson in thy lips and in thy cheeks. And that pale flag is not advanced there. Tibble, liest thou there, my bloody sheep? <laughs> oh, what more favor can I do to thee than with that hand that cut thy youth in twain to sunder his that was thine enemy? Forgive me, cousin. Ah, dear Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous? And that he hold you here to be in dark to be his paramour? For fear of that, I shall stay with thee, and never from this palace of dim night depart again. Oh, here, here will I set up my everlasting rest. Oh, here. Yoga, inauspicious stars from this world weird flesh. <sighs> Eyes, look your last. Arms, take your last embrace. And lips, oh, you, the doors of breath, seal with a righteous kiss, a dateless bargain to engrossing death. <laughs> Come, bitter conduct. Come, unsavory guide, thou desperate pilot. Now at once, run on the rock thy, oh, thy seasick, weary bark. Here's to my love.